All right, what's going on people? It is Simply Nerd with a quick video on a new shifter that I just installed in the daily. Shut my door here so these guys don't get out. Look at those guys. All right, so the shifter that I installed is from WK Motor Works. Uh, right now, I'm just grabbing a screwdriver, if I can find one, so I can show you guys how I have this in. It's fairly simple. Here's my baby right here. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. More to come on the Porsche, but I know I've been gone for a while. Here is the XB right here. Already running. I'll squeeze around here. Get into the call. Here is the shifter. shut the car off you guys can hear me good so it's a fairly simple install it is not straightforward per se there's a couple things you have to do and there's a couple extra things that i've that i've already had before i put this shifter in i had a short shifter from i think i bought it from fast hondas uh, i'm not gonna lie i can't remember what it is but it's universal it's still readily available set screw on that was not as strong as i thought it was going to be and on my way to work one day that bad boy loosened up so I had a floppy shifter so put that back together rolling for that I've been looking for a, a actual short throw shifter for a really long time and I came across this company looking at someone else's video uh, called WK Motorsports a guy he has a Yaris and he had this and I was like man that looks good but I know the Yaris pretty much has the same drivetrain, but I do know that they have a slightly different transmission. So I wasn't sure if it was gonna work or not, but I know I uh, did some research. Uh, looks like our shifter shares the same exact thing as the Yaris, pull the trigger. Now this shifter here is $500, 500 US dollars. Um, the company does not have a website. You have to contact them directly via Facebook or Instagram. You'll get an automated reply that they reply faster on Facebook. So that's what I did, I uh, ordered, uh, had a couple options uh, here. I went ahead and ordered the weighted shifter with it. This bad boy is really heavy. It's got a lot of good weight to it. Uh, with this type of shifter, it's really not needed, uh, but it's just a preference really. I like the way it looked. So see that there? It looked really good to me. That camera focus, there we go. Okay, and so went ahead and went with that option. I mean, the overall design of the shifter is really nice. Now, yes, it is already installed, so this is not gonna be an installation video. Uh, this is just gonna be a once over. But what I can tell you is that the, the tightness of it is ridiculous. Let me show you guys. So, without the boot and everything, let's see if the camera will focus here. There we go. So just the, the throw, I don't know if you see how far I'm throwing here, but it's not far at all. So you see that, it's real tight. Shifts are very stiff. Might help I push the pedal in here. Shifts are very tight. And it's really, it's really nice to do. I mean, the shifts are so tight now, instead of being all wobbly, see it's real tight here. Not a lot of play at all. That when I was in the freaking Porsche, it seemed like my shifter in the Porsche was broke. Cause I was driving this for so long. So now let's go ahead and open that up so I can kind of show you guys uh, what I had to do to install this. If you have an armrest, mine's is not screwed down for obvious reasons. So if you look down in the back here, you should have a screw. So we're gonna take our nine and one and take that bad boy out. Now in the front, there are two, uh, retaining clips they pull straight up so i recently installed some new ones so it's going to be very tight but should lift straight up so let's see here I put my hand here on this side of the cup holder put the other hand on the other side that's where the clips are just get it and pop straight up all right i think one might have broke but that's okay that's what we have others for and i will show you the part number that i use for those so yep one broke you can see there 
one of the clips that I use. Here's the shifter in its glory. So you can see the throws on it. Very nice. There is a video that comes with this. Uh, it is in Chinese. The company is located in Hong Kong. So when you guys order it, there is going to be a delay in talking to them. If you message them at like, let's say one in the afternoon, well, they're asleep. Okay, that, that, that's their bedtime. It's, uh, putting this together is pretty straightforward. My shifter cables were slightly back, so it is okay to take this and pull. Uh, mind you, when you take them out, I just put two fingers underneath and pull up. So just pull up as hard as you can. You're not gonna break it, trust me. Now, uh, as far as installation goes, this is the center, so this is OEM. To take this off, you have these little, a little retaining clip here. You open it and just push it back. So there's two sides to it, okay? So you see that? See that wiggle in there? You open that, you open the other side, and you push it right back, you'll see it fall back out of the back side of this clip. This one here is just a simple retaining ring. So you push that little hook down and just, and just pull it, pull right out. So there's nothing special about that. And then you can take your shifter cables after popping them out in the bracket on the OEM and push them straight out the way. The only thing that I had to move out the way, yes, the car is dirty. This is the daily, the kids and dogs do be in here. You have to unbolt this. So this has to unbolt. I don't know why the camera's not focusing there, but there we go. So you have to unbolt that. There is no ifs, ands, or buts. It's in the way of the shifter. The back end of the shifter is long. Uh, there's the bolt holes for the yaw sensor So you have That one there and then you have that one over there. So as you can see there's no way That that would ever go back there. So right now just have this sitting here uh, with The center console on this bad boy does not move. I do not want to unplug it. You can unplug it uh, It's not gonna throw a fault, but it apparently It'll mess with your ABS, and also, if you keep it unplugged for too long, it will eventually throw a fault code, okay? So, I just left mine there. There's no problem with it. Uh, it doesn't rattle around, trust me, it's planted. Uh, yeah, no issue there. The other thing you have to move, but you can actually put back later, is the O2 plug. So this has a little clip, oh, well mine, didn't really stay too well so you can see that there so that little clip goes in right underneath here and I had that there for a while but it doesn't want to stay so screw that I guess uh, but uh, I did put that back underneath of it um, and it seemed to be staying there uh, like I said once the center console is on a lot of this stuff is not gonna move at all uh, let's see so with the installation process uh, it comes with two plastic bushings Let's see if I can get that there so don't pay attention to this top one these two plastic bushings go on the rear from what I've seen on the video okay um, now what I did is I had really long bolts along with these aluminum washers or aluminum bushings from my previous so I just actually used that to kind of help keep it planted so I put one here and then I did a, another one here to help put that down and that's only because I had really long bolts and I did not feel like going to the store to grab smaller bolts now I will tell you that the two bolts that came out of the yaw sensor I used one up front so I used a small bolt here one of the bolts that came out of the yaw sensor and also I happen to have because when I used my other spacer up top there, uh, when I threw it in the first gear, I don't know if see if I can show it, so I'll throw it in first. So when I did that, that actually hit that, um, that extra spacer I had. So you see there's a lot of room there, but believe it or not, I was hitting that somehow. So what I ended up having to do, I looked in my garage. I'm sorry, I can't tell you the, the screw size, the thread count, but I did have a slightly smaller one that would work without me using my uh, bushings I had from my previous one. And I put that there and it installed no problem. The all sensor sits there. One of the bolts from the all sensor, I put right there. I used uh, two bushings there because like I said, I had long bolts from my previous one and I didn't know the thread count, didn't feel like searching and didn't feel like going to the store. Uh, then I used one bushing on the bottom that comes with the shifter. 
and then just an extra one I had to along, along with my bolt. And then for this one over here, you can see that down there, I used uh, just the bushing supplied with the shifter. All right, so after that, after you get that all settled in, then you can push down the shifters. Now it is hard, I'm not gonna lie, it, it is really tight pushing in on this because you're pushing in on a metal frame. I don't know if this is steel or aluminum, but you're pushing on a metal frame nonetheless, and uh, as opposed to plastic. So just push that in, and then you'll be able to pop that in. Make sure you throw a little dab of grease on there to keep it lubed up. Uh, once you do that, put your retaining clip in. Same thing with this, that literally just slides right on. Uh, the last thing to do before you can put this on is this here. So I'll actually take this off and show you. So there is, trying to get this here, it's hard, it's hard with, the, with the chair here. So right there, see that little clip here? So the way this comes off, it pops out that way. And if you can see, it sticks out on this side here. So it sticks out right there. So it swings over. You do this without dropping it. And it pulls right out. So this clip here holds that together. So and how that's done is it just pops right off. I can get it off. Don't make a fool of me. Hold on. Try this again. Simple. Yeah, there we go. All right. So now, from what I've seen uh, from other installation videos and looking at the instructions that's in Chinese that comes, one side is fixed, the other side is not. So the fixed side is going to go on the bottom. So always put the fixed side on the bottom. The top side, which is adjustable, so you can adjust this. You want to adjust it to about the same height. And this comes pre-lubed up, by the way. You want to adjust this about the same height as where the shifter is. Now the shifter is self-leveling. So even with that disconnected, it is self-leveling. It's always gonna go back to straight. So you want to raise this about the same height as the shifter, pop it in, and then put your clip back in. Okay, so you want to put that clip in. There's a little hole on the bottom. See if I can do this while showing you guys. You just find that hole there. I didn't find the hole. Change hands. Hold on. Do, do, do. Let's try this again. So, find the hole. Alright, so once you find the hole, We'll just slide that bad boy around just like that and that is done now let me see if I can find the clips I use because if you're like me and you break those all the time all around this car it comes in handy so let's see if, we're... if you don't have one of these get you one simpler remover it's not the proper one to use for this but it does work it is a clip remover nonetheless stream motor sports stream motor sports you guys see that there you go here's the old shifter real janky <laughs> yeah no one likes that uh and the brand of this short shifter that i had is a fendanza fendanza or something like that tony danza tony danza dancing this little piece of tape here is just something i put there with a zip tie so i can put my shifter boot on and not have it slide up and down because there is no retainer for it but yeah this this thing wobbled all over the place so no more of that. So I have the bag and here's the clip I used. So this was a Toyota door trim panel retainer. Now there was four in here. I think I broke one already. As you can see, I just broke another one. Um, and the part number on this is 963131D as in dog. I will put that in the uh, description. Uh, there are little blue ones. Hold on, I got a BMW in here because I was testing out some things. So the BMW works too. I'll give you the part number on that one as well. So the BMW works pretty damn good. 
So, and the BMW one is 963130D. So one number off. The BMWs are little white retainers. So let's go fix that. And I'll show you guys that I was actually able to put the boot back on. And I'll show you what all that looks like. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to take this out using this. If you don't know, uh, you'd be surprised at how many people do not know how to use this. So let me show you. And I'm going to probably show you the wrong way. Bam. All right. So you take this, you use that side, you get underneath as hard as you can, and you just pop up. That bad boy's pretty freaking flat, so let me see if I can get under it. I'm gonna try to actually get under it. Let me see here. Get my nine in one. Get my nine in one, change the flat head. Try to prop this up a little bit if I can. Or I'm just gonna go grab a thing of pliers. So all I'm doing now is prying up an edge so I can get the tool underneath. Doing this with one hand's a little hard. Don't worry, I show all the mistakes in my video. All right, so come on, come on. All right, that doesn't want to work. So round two. All right, so I'm gonna try it real quick. Give me just a moment. Do this with two hands. All right, pop right out. All right, so got it. I just need a little bit of extra strength, so I actually used my flathead to get this out with it broke like that. So trying to get that tool underneath there and it was just kind of chipping everywhere so now to put this in very simple so you grab it just like that flip this bad boy over right there see that end right there slide that directly in place push and it's gonna lock there you go, hear that little pop. All right, so now to get this back on, uh, I do have all tech weather mats. So I hit the front down first. Squeeze it between these seats, like so. Move the seat belt out the way. See the parking brake parked there? There you go, it'll just kind of fall down. Uh, move it forward slightly, dip, and push it back then you'll be able to see that hole there. So now, to put the screw in, so there you go. So now you see that hole there, and what I like to do is just drop the screw into place. So, go right there, drop the screw into place like that, take the screwdriver, and uh, wiggle it up and down. I know it's hard to see on camera. So let's see it in place. Just screw that bad boy down. The front side, I like it tight. So, uh, so you don't break these, because these are very strong, but apparently very brittle as well. I like to make sure I get at least one side in first, so, so you can see the hole there. So, I kind of like to lift up, see where that's at. You'll see the hole there as well. So just line that bad boy up and push down. Just like that. Then the other side, same thing. All right, so now that we have that together, it's not moving, uh, here's the fun part. So you can choose either to leave this exposed like that, um, which is fine. But like I said, this is my daily, this is my family car uh, right now. Even though I'm building it, you can reinstall the shift boot. Now I'm eventually get another one, but I'm gonna show you guys how I did it. So um, I do not have the original. This is the one that came with the shifter now. Uh, but if you invert this, let's see if I can show you real quick, hold on. All right, so you can actually invert this and there is a retaining ring underneath. And it's a little, it's a little wire, it's a piece of metal. It's just folded around. It does take a little bit, so show you guys this. So you see that little ring there? Let's see if you can 
Let's see that. Doop, doop. There we go. So that little ring there, just take that bad boy off. Um, you will have to, I guess, kind of modify it slightly. So you might have to bend it, close it back some more to do it. But that ring there, get a good look at it. There we go. Um, take the old one off, uh, put this one on the boot, and then just pop this back through. Once you do that, I'll show you guys me putting it back on the shifter. So take the knob back off, just like that. Take this piece off, the, the little sleeve here, little carbon fiber sleeve. Cabo fiber, cabo fiber, cabo fiber. Throw that bad boy on there, pop it over. So this is the first piece. And you'll be able to slide that around. So that's where that little ball is, little shifter. You're gonna slide that around and pop it into place. Like that. And you're good to go. You got that there. Slide your sleeve on. Slide your WK Motorsports uh, little bracket on. Little pushing. Just like that. Face it up. And put your shifter back on like that and you are ready to go so it does make this car a lot funner to drive the gears are a lot tighter it feels like just doing this um, I definitely recommend getting uh, new cables if you do this uh, have mines on the way they are a pain in the butt to find unless you want to pay $200 from Toyota which I do not want to do so I don't know why it's always hard to find manual stuff for this car but it definitely is. So that is the quick run through for this. Get my, my arm holster back. Put that right there. There you go. So that is a quick run through for the WK Motorsports Shifter. Like I said, I'll have the links for stuff in the description. Uh, I'll make sure that I keep you guys up to date. I'll try to post more stuff on my car builds. Uh, I don't really have a lot going on, on this channel away as you can tell still sounds stuffy save you guys all the details but i have surgery in april for my nose uh so i can actually breathe because right now i sound like i'm about 300 something odd pounds uh, but after that i will be posting more uh thankfully i will be ready for the spring and summer so more videos coming to you guys simply nerd out. so tell me where to go feel like i have a place to call Took me from my parents crying, throwing up. Can't forget the look.